Hi everybody, today I wanted to walk you through my general hair care routine while living in the van. I get a lot of questions and comments about my hair and wanted to show you that it's really not that hard to take care of a nightmare like this living in a van. Obviously this is not how my hair normally looks. I brushed it out today, which is something I pretty rarely do. I wanted to show you guys my whole hair journey. So this is what my hair used to look like when I was about 10 to 14 years old, I had this in a ponytail every single day. And for all those of you watching, living that life right now, there is hope. I'm really lucky to come from parents with great hair. My dad has this wonderful, thick, Italian, pretty straight hair. My mom is a standard poodle. And so together, I have this nice combination of frizzy, Hagrid combination hair. I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of what it takes to take care of hair like this, but first, I'm gonna jump in the shower and hose down this big ball of fluff. I'll be right back. Bye! Woo! Okay, we're back. Wow, feels great to take a shower in a van. There is a timeline on how quickly you need to get some product in your hair and start working with it. But first, I am gonna put some clothes on. All right, everybody. This technique that I'm going to show you works for anybody that wants to have defined curls, whether you have wavy, frizzy, or super curly hair. If your hair has any curl to it, this will work for you and you will have amazing results. And if you don't, rip me apart in the comments and I will try to figure out a solution for you. This is what you need. Curls Rock Curl Amplifier Catwalk by TG or T-I-G-I. It works wonders. All you do is blob a little bit into your hands. I'd say about two blobs. Two blobs is exactly what I use. Scrunch it in pretty evenly and really work it from the root down to the tip. A lot of people stop here. They scrunch and let it air dry. But wait. All you need to do is part your hair where you like it parted. This is literally the only time I brush my hair, is when I take it in a part and divide it into two sections, brush one section just with my fingers, because the more friction you add to your hair with a hairbrush, the frizzier it's gonna be. The less you play with it, the better it is. You run your fingers through it to get out some of the bigger knots, and now you separate individual curls and twirl it with your finger to just give the curl something to cling to, to give it some definition. Start at the top, just every inch or two apart, I have hair gel on my hand, so I'm adding a bit to the strand as I'm separating it out from the rest of my hair. And then you twirl it away from your face so that when it dries, it has this nice curl away from your face to show your face off. It looks great. This is the most tedious part of my hair care routine. It takes a full five minutes and then the hair drying process starts. Other than that, that's literally all I do. When you're done with one side, kind of twist it all together just again give it something to cling to. All the frizziness comes from curls that don't have anything else to stick to and that creates insane volume and insane frizziness. And then you just move over to the other side. Run your fingers through it and then do the same thing. You're kind of working your way through your hair in layers. So you start in a top layer and then slowly work your way down. It's not really about being perfect just about getting all the hair in there at some point. Now you have all of your hair scrunched with gel and hand twirled. You let it go. So if you don't do this final scrunch, you're gonna have kind of fake looking curls, overly defined. And it looks a little bit beachier and more natural to just let them be looser. So this final scrunch helps with that. And you definitely wanna focus on the ends. A couple face framing scrunches and you're good. Really simple, really easy. However, you have now entered the hair drying stage. The hair drying stage is by far the worst part. There are three major stages of the hair drying process. The first is wet dog phase. I'm in that right now. Wet dog phase will last for at least an hour. Your hair looks plastered to your face, no volume, really unattractive. You don't wanna go out, you don't want people to see you, but it's a crucial part of the hair drying process. You wanna just kind of like sit and do work and especially be outside of wind and outside of humidity. Those are the biggest things that you always wanna avoid while your hair is drying. Wind and humidity will ruin this whole process. Pretty much sit around, it sucks, but it's, it's what you gotta do. 
Okay, about an hour has passed. My hair might not look very different, but it feels super different. So we've gone from the wet dog phase of hair drying process to crunchy. Crunchy has a little bit more tone to it. It just looks brittle and fake walking around with crunchy hair. So it's mostly dry, but it's still in the, in the drying process for maybe another hour or two. And that's when it'll become soft and touchable and look a lot more natural. It won't look as it won't look as manufactured. Won't look as Beverly Hills Nano 210. Once we enter the last stage, which is just called the final stage, I don't have a name for it. Once we enter that stage, that's when it's a lot more touchable, soft, natural looking. You can be a little bit more active with it. And at that point your hair is set. It's not really gonna change a ton and you're basically good to go. So until then, we're still trying to avoid wind and humidity. We're trying to avoid heat and direct sunlight if at all possible. In maybe an hour or so, I'll be able to like flip my hair around and not have to worry about it at all anymore. In terms of hair care in general, I wash my hair about once or twice a week. For my type of hair, that's actually perfect. The more you wash it, the drier and more brittle it gets. It doesn't actually get oily from not washing it the way maybe some other hair types would react to longer intervals of washing. So for my hair, it actually works really well. This hair care routine is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. I don't own a blow dryer. Is that what it's called? I don't own a blow dryer or a hair straightener, brushes, combs, just this goop. I own goop and I own hair ties and like one or two clips. It also really helps curly hair if it's longer. The longer it is, the heavier it is, and that'll kind of help keep it controlled. I used to think that I would look really cute in a bob, so when I was about 13, I cut my hair to here. Basically, it was just a huge afro because there was no weight to keep it pulled down straight. I'll spare you the torture of looking at those pictures of my beautiful blunder years. I'll see you at the final stage of the hair drying process and you can kind of see the transformation of what the end product looks like. All right, it's been maybe another 45 minutes ish, maybe an hour, and we are finally in final stage of the hair drying process. Honestly, the hair drying process itself is really what matters the most for this result. At this point now, I can put it up, do stuff to it, touch it. It's not gonna change the way my hair has dried. Up until this point, I was like trying not to touch it at all and just pretty much sit straight and not let anything move my hair. Just let it dry and do its thing. It looks much better now than it would in a more humid climate. We're filming this in Montana where it's nice and dry. The dryness and the low humidity really help curly hair. If we're in more humid climate like the Pacific Northwest or pretty much the entire East Coast, which is where I grew up, then it's a little bit harder to manage. Maybe a couple extra blobs of this guy when you are putting the product in your hair to, the, to begin with and really make sure that the first two phases of the hair drying process, the wet dog phase and the crunchy phase, you're giving your hair like time to just sit there and dry. Sounds really boring, but that's all it takes. Patience, let it do its own thing. I hope this was helpful. I hope that answers some of your questions. Um, I know, you know, everyone has different hair. This is what works for me personally. I would love to know what works for you or other tips for maintaining healthy, nice, touchable hair, especially for living in a van. I've found that this is the easiest process for me and it results in what I think is at least a decent hairstyle. If you have any further questions or any other suggestions, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Like this video if you haven't already. Please subscribe to Trent and Allie. We would really appreciate that as well. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.